Greetings to you all, my people, and welcome to another episode of Damole News. All right, my people, I don't understand the kind of leaders we have or had in this country because a former minister of communication, Adebay Oshitu, has urged the federal government to exploit the approach of negotiation in its bid to deal with the crisis of banditry in Nigeria. Shitu, who is a former minister in the President Muhammad Dubuari administration, stated this in an interview on Shannon's television. According to him, he said, if I am in a position, it is not too late to use no kinetic measures in negotiating with bandits, giving them a promising future. Let us retain them. Many of them are very intelligent. Many of them are able-bodied, he said. So the federal government negotiating with these bandits or terrorists is not a good option in Nigeria. Imagine that, my people. All right, These bandits or these terrorists are the ones involved in kidnapping people. These bandits and these terrorists are the ones involved in taking lives. All because of what? There are millions of youth and children in this country who are not getting any favor from the federal government, but they are not carrying arms to kidnap and kill people. And if the federal government decides to negotiate with these terrorists, is that not empowering terrorism in Nigeria? Sending message to the youth that terrorism is a very lucrative business in Nigeria. So I wonder why all these our leaders will just come out and be advocating for terrorism in Nigeria. I don't understand it at all. Alright, I'm going to let you guys watch the video. But before then, please help us like, share and subscribe to this channel so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend us to more people. Thank you. If you fail to educate the children of the poor, they would ensure that your own children cannot sleep with both eyes closed. Come to think of it, today you have more than 20 million out of school children. That is a ready, you know, production factory for bandits in the near future. Even the bandits of today became bandits because the society had abandoned them. And I'm, I mean, if you look at it, the other day the gov Cardinal State Governor was saying that there are more than 600,000, you know, out of school children. If government refuses because you want to use money for some other things which are less important, at the end of the day, when these children, these abandoned children grow up and they see other people enjoying life, they see other people riding cars, you know, wearing very good, uh, you know, dresses and living in good houses, you think they would just uh, resign themselves to faith? They would take up arms in rebellion against society. So for me, my advice, and this will not be the first time that I'll be, you know, campaigning, you know, as it were, or advocating that government should reorder its priorities and rather spend money. The money which is being used for palliatives should be diverted for, you know, establishment or expenditure on free and composition. You saw that every child born in this country would be educated. Of course, once that is done, the quality of the individuals, you know, would improve. And nobody who is educated would, in his right senses, think that he should be living in the forest or in the bush mm. and, you know, bearing arms. I mean, this banditry matter uh, and the insecurity that we have seen, uh, it looks so much like uh, th there was a spike uh, what is the best way to, to maneuver and kill For me, if I'm in position, it is not too late to use non-kinetic measures, you know, in negotiating with bandits, giving them a promising future. Let us retain them. Many of them are very intelligent. Many of them, you know, are able-bodied. To negotiate with the terrorists. To re for the purpose of resettling, rehabilitating, and retraining them. Those who, equip, those who, are, those who are bent on killing innocent people. They, they, I have said it. What, what is the cause of they wanting to kill everybody? It is because society had abandoned them over the years. Abandoned? Yes. We don't know who these bandits are. Well, they are, I mean, we know that they are citizens of Nigeria. Sometimes we know they, they, they are not. Well, whether they are not, I mean, once we are within our territory, there must be a way. In uh, Boko Haram, at the height of Boko Haram, when a lot of them were caught, of course, they, 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 they put them in camps and started reorientating them and all of that, you know, and, you know, giving them skills and all of that. So the more skills you're able to give to the largest number of them, you know, the less their propensity to go back. If they are assured that if promising future, erosive future are with them. 
after going through you know this uh, the, ra the radicalization processes and you know skills training so you, you are proposing uh, because at the end of the day the amount of money we are spending on the armed forces to confront these people it looks like their number is endless because in the bush you have more than thousands of groups in the in the forest particularly in the northwest and northeast you know so is that wasting too much money you know on acquiring arms and ammunition and so on let us rearrange let us find a way after after every war there must still be coming you know to a round table to negotiate so if you're saying negotiate with this bandit isn't that an impetus for other people to carry arms because now they say they, they, they will think that whatever they are doing, they are bringing the government to its knees to negotiate with them. Well, you see, whether you like it or not, banditry did not begin today, did not begin yesterday. And something must, of course, we have to look at it. We have to, you know, invite our psychologists, you know, to come to the, to give us and let us find out, investigate what is the cause of banditry in Nigeria. I mean, when the, did it start? How did it start? Mr. Shito, the, even the, use, the coinage and the use of what the bandit uh, could be an initial word for those who will stomp people's farms, stomp people's homes, and cut away whatever they be. Yeah. That describes a bandit. But I, people who goes into schools and cut away children uh, in their school are no longer bandits. They are pure terrorists. I mean, I, I would refuse to call them so bandits. How, what do we do? What do we do? I call how, them how do we solve So them? how do you then describe what, what, a situation where the government now begins to sit down with these see, criminal the, the terrorist elements? The important thing for government is to solve this problem of banditry. If there are a hundred ways of solving the problem, you have to try as many of those methods to ensure that we have peace, to ensure that these people lay down their arms and ammunition and to you know add value to their own lives for them to be able to also contribute you know to nation building hasn't it become uh, a major business enterprise it is because, because they're collecting a lot of money for there, are, there are possibilities there are possibilities all this of this at this state all debate. of the well, <laughs> what, 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 what do you think about are they going to bring the, the members of the state police are they going to bring them from heaven would they not be the same Nigerians who some of many of who are already in the Nigerian police? If you are criticizing Nigerian police for that they are not effective enough, I mean, are you bringing wizards and witches and uh, you know angels for those uh, for those people? I mean, uh, into the so you don't think state police is the way to? Go? I want to believe that we already have a Nigerian police force made up of diverse citizens from all parts of the country. The only argument people clamoring for the state police is the fact that perhaps they post people who are strangers aliens to send it out they post them to those places and then they are not able to know you know they are left from the right let us improve on the you know uh, admission of people or employment of people into the police let us strengthen them if it is that we should put people in areas where the come from or where they know better. There are a lot of Igbos, for instance, who were born in Lagos. There are a lot of Yorubas, born in Kano, born in Sokoto, who know those areas more than, you know, their original, you know, places. So, really, that argument is, because my fear, you are trying to empower state governors more, and the state, a lot of these state governors have really killed the third arm of government. I mean, the third year of government. Because our federation is based on a tripod of federal, state, and local government. There's hardly any state in this country today where we have a lo local government system we, where people there are really local and are also governments in actual fact. Most of our local governments are neither local nor are they governments. They, are, they, they operate and exist as apron strings of the respective executives. If there is one way to handle some of these myriads of problems, because I'm very certain that President Bola Tinobu will want to write his name in gold and want to leave a lasting legacy. As your final word tonight, how would you think that he should go about this? Well, the problems are already monumental and they are diverse. And which is a, because we worked for him, we supported him because of the legacy that he had in Lagos. We were confident that having run Lagos State successfully, 
you know, by all standards, he has necessary experience and exposure, you know, to be able to handle the nation as a whole. So, my people, that is it for you all. Please let me know your opinion about this news in the comment section. And please help us like, share, and subscribe to this channel so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend us to more people. Thank you so much for your time and God bless you. Amen.